Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Yesterday I received an email from a gentleman asking me how I would use Photoshop to remove the background from an image of a flower and replace that background with black. Well, it's kind of difficult to explain that in an email, so I thought I'd do this video because what I'm going to show you in this video isn't just applicable to flowers. It's applicable to whenever you need to make a selection of something and mask out other things in an image. So I think this video will be beneficial to many people. Now I chose this image because it's um, not just a flower all by itself in space. Uh, we have other elements here, which is just going to make it a little more difficult. Now what you need to do, whatever it is you want to keep, maybe it's a flower, maybe it's a car, maybe it's a person, you have to make a selection of them. Now in Photoshop, there's a lot of different tools to make selections. There's a few tools that are grouped together. Uh, if you hit the W key on your keyboard, that's the keyboard shortcut for this uh, selection tool area. And there's an object selection tool, quick selection tool, magic wand tool. Depending on what you're doing, any one of these tools might be a better choice uh, than the other two. Uh, but it depends. Most often though, if the object is pretty, like in this case, it's obvious, you're going to want to use the quick selection tool. So you would quick this, get that, and you would basically draw around the image and create a selection around it. But as I mentioned, there's a lot of different tools in Photoshop that help you get selections. One that you should try first whenever you're trying to select something in a scene is the select subject button up here. Now this will only appear if you're in the quick selection cubby over here. So let's say you're in the move tool, it's not gonna be there. Hit the W key on your keyboard, go to the quick selection or any of these, it doesn't matter which one, but you'll have select subject active, all right? So what you'll do then is just click on select subject and it's going to do its thinking and it's going to select what it thinks is the subject. And nine times out of 10, maybe 9,999 times out of 10,000, it's um, going to select it, but not perfectly. Uh, so in this case, it selected the the uh, butterfly pretty well. It selected this flower pretty well, but it also selected the flower in the background. It didn't select all the stem of this flower. It didn't select the antenna of the butterfly all the way. But this is a good starting point. So now what we can do is we could use the quick selection tool to fix the areas that need fixing. Now, whenever you're open the quick selection tool, you're presented with the quick selection tool brush. And by default, it's going to have plus in the middle of it. Now I'll use the right bracket key to make it larger so you could see there's a plus in the middle. That means we're going to add to the selection. So the antenna of the butterfly that aren't selected and the stem of the, of the flower, I'm going to use the plus brush to add to the selection. On the other hand, this flower over here that I have to remove from the selection, I'll hold the Alt or Option key and Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac, and you see it turns into a minus sign. So we're gonna remove that from the selection. So let's start there. Let's get a little smaller brush, hold the Alt Option key in, and then come in here and remove the selection from that flower in the background. Now let's add the selection to the stem below. I'm going to again uh, hit the left bracket key, get a little bit of a smaller brush, and just come down here and paint just like that and add to that selection. Now it over selected a little bit. I don't know if you could see it in the video, but I'm gonna hold the alter option key in and just kind of shave it a little bit there. And that's good. All right, now we need to get these antenna. This can be a little more difficult because they're just so small, but we're gonna hit the left bracket key and get a super small brush. And then we're gonna come in here and now I'm adding to the selection. So I'm not holding in the alt option key. And I'm just gonna come in here and add this top antenna. to the selection. Now we need to add the middle part of this antenna, which didn't get selected. It's gonna be even harder because it's thinner. And I did it, so that got selected. Now I see one other thing here. This part right here is selected and we don't want this selected, this little part of the flower. So I'm gonna hold the Alt Option key in and come in here and deselect that. So we have that deselected. Now, 
it's not still not a perfect selection. I mean, if you look at the edges of the flowers, you could see how it's not, you know, selected perfectly. We're going to fix that. Where we're going to fix it here, let me fix this actually too. It didn't select this here, so we'll come in here and select that. There we go. All right, now how we're going to fix those little uh, like edges of the flowers and everything is we're going to go up here to the top where it says Select and Mask. When you click on that, it will open up the image in the Select and Mask dialog. Now, as you could see, at least on my Photoshop, by default, it showed this red background. Um, you have a number of different choices of what you, uh, the way you want to view it. Um, again, by default on mine, it showed red. But if you go over here and you hit this drop down, you can see there's like onion skin. And if I click, there's like marching ants, which is what we had. But I think what would be best for this, since we're going to replace the background with black, is just to go to on black. And when we do that, we'll have a black background and we have an opacity slider. So I'm just going to turn the opacity all the way up so we could really see what we're working with now. All right, now it's pretty obvious um, what needs work, like these little edges of the flower and this, um, the stem itself and whatnot. So what we'll do is on the left, we have a bunch of tools. We have that quick selection tool, but that won't work here or wouldn't be the right choice. The tool right below it is the tool, Refine Edge. This is the tool you'll most often you'll use when you're in this Select and Mass dialog box. So again, that has a brush that is controlled with the bracket keys. And what you'll do is you mainly just paint, like get a smaller one, and you just want to paint in here and refine the selection. So it'll come in and it will just get a better selection on that area, like in here, in all these little like edges of the petals or the flowers itself and in here and in here I'm just going very quickly and now the edge of this uh, stem I'm going to get a larger brush and we'll come and brush across this and brush up this way all right, now I didn't like what it did over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the actual brush tool itself and I'm going to remove from the selection. Now what this tool will do is it's just going to, wherever I brush, it's going to remove that from the selection. So it has no like brain to it. So it's just going to see how it just kind of, so as though I'm painting in black right here. So we could use that wherever it kind of screwed up. I'm going to go back to the Refine Edge tool and we'll come down in here, smaller brush, find that edge, find that edge a little more. All right, uh, in here, now I'm sure I could sit here for a long time and find a lot of little nooks and crannies that I need to improve, but let's just, for the sake of argument, say that's good enough. Now we're ready to output this. By the way, there's like some controls over here. Um, sometimes if you move radius to the right a little bit, I suggest smaller movements like two, three pixels. It might improve your selection a bit. Also, um, if it looks a little jagged, you could move this smooth slider to the right and it kind of just kind of smooths everything out a little bit. Also, if you just feather the edge a bit, sometimes it makes it look a little more realistic. So I'll feather it slightly. Contrast slider, uh, helps it make a better selection if there's a lot of contrast between your edges. In this case, there isn't. Sometimes it just is effective to shift the edge of your selection. So if you have a lot of fringing, like white fringing or something, you could shift it in to get rid of that white fringing. Or if it isn't selecting enough of your subject, you would shift it out. It's much more common to shift in. It's moving it to the left than shift out, moving to the right. So I think that looks pretty good right there. Um, so what we're going to do now is we need to output it. Now, do you want to output it to a selection, a layer mask, a new layer? What we're going to do is a new layer with layer mask. The reason why we're picking that is we're going to have a layer mask with it. And if we need to fix the mask, we could go and fix the mask. So if it turns out it didn't look as good as I thought it looked, we could come back in and fix what we did with this mask. So we're going to click that and we're going to click OK. So there's our selection. Now it automatically turned off the background layer. So you could see that it isolated the butterfly and the flower. Now, 
the email I got yesterday from the gentleman, he wants to put a black background behind it. Now to do that, what we need to do is put a layer underneath the, this, what says it's called background copy. We need to put a layer underneath that background copy, but above the background layer. To do that, go to the new layer dialog, right? Or new layer button right here and hold the command or control key in when you do it. Control if you have a PC, command if you have a Mac, and it will put the layer underneath. Otherwise, if you just clicked on it, it would put it on top. Now we need to fill this with black. All different ways you could do this. Um, just, you could go up to um, edit, fill, then right here, black. Make sure you're clicked on the layer though. If you're clicked on the wrong layer, you're gonna fill the wrong layer with black and click okay. And there is our isolated flower and butterfly on a black background. So that's really one way you could go about doing it. And probably the most common way that is you would select the subject first, refine that selection with the quick selection tool, then further refine that selection with the select and mask and go on from there. Now I mentioned that I outputted it from select and mask with a layer mask. If you double click on that layer mask, you'll get this dialog box back again and you could come in and refine it. See, we have our refine tools over here. We have all these sliders over here. So you could come back in and fix anything. Uh, that's why it is prudent to down here, outload it with a new layer with layer mask in that step. That's why you wanna do that. So again, this isn't just applicable to flowers and butterflies. Um, any anytime you need to isolate someone from a background for whatever reason, uh, the techniques I showed you in this video should help. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.